What's your best I didn't just dodge a bullet, but a tactical nuke story. The boy I dated ghosted me. Was a bit shit but okay. Two years later. Saw his picture in the newspaper. He had been done for raping underage girls. Yikes. My mom's BFF had a son get out of prison. He was doing tattoos for a living. We lived in a state that still had tattoos illegal at the time. So he and his mom came to our house to give us a tattoo. I was like 18 at the time and I think he was in his early 20s. We were told he went to prison because, well he did have a drug problem at the time. He took the fall for someone carrying a fuckton of meth. His mom kept hinting and eventually outright suggesting I let him take me on a date. She swore up and down he needed a good influence like me. I'll admit. I did feel pressured quite a bit. His mom was one of my favorite people in the world and I felt like I was letting her down. But I was not feeling it. Dude was not attractive at all. Worst of all. He was covered in swastikas that he claimed was to survive prison. I also found it really creepy that he kept oddly stroking my foot while doing a tattoo several inches above my ankle. But. We managed to end the tattoo party with no dates made. Cool. About three months later, I'm listening to the news as background noise and I hear her son's name mentioned. Police are looking for him. He strangled his girlfriend and all four of her children. After the girlfriend caught him molesting one of the kids. When it said that the other person needs someone to be a good influence, that's a huge red flag. Right away, it says the other person has some recognized shit qualities and is unwilling or unable to make changes to their own life and you are expected to write in and convince them to change. That or the person really has a need to have a positive influence and would benefit from such relationships. In either case. Proceed with much caution. Not me but my godfather. He worked in the second tower that was hit on 9 11 Luckily he had car trouble that morning and had to take his car into the shop. I made friends with an older guy, mid-twenties, when I was 15. He seemed kinda lonely but otherwise harmless. Probably should have recognized that a grown man being friends with a teenage girl was weird. But I was naive and very trusting. He started trying to flirt with me and eventually made some rape threats. At which point I cut off contact and basically told him to get fucked. He was arrested a year later for child porn and indecent liberties with a minor. And say it was much of a surprise. But I'm still so relieved that I cut contact when I did. I used to hook up with guys on Craigslist. I was going through a really self-destructive phase of my life and that's really all I have to say about that. I was supposed to meet up with this one guy. I was on the way to his motel room when I get a text from him. Clearly an accident and meant for someone else. It was a picture of me and it said something like got a new toy for us this week. I don't know who it was for but we were only supposed to hook up that night and then I was leaving. A friend of mine dated an ex-cop who was an asshole and ate all of her child's food. He was later found to have cut up two women and dumped them on the side of the highway in suitcases. Luckily she broke up with him before his killing days. Ate all of her child's food. Literally taking candy from a baby. In other news. I now have this mental image of a spiteful man gobbling down baby formula. Trying to convince himself that it's worth it. I used to go to raves and take ecstasy when I was 19 to 20. In the late 90s. One weekend my friends went to a rave and I had to stay home to watch my little sister. About a dozen people in my friend group went. And ended up buying paramethoxymethamphetamine, PMMA, sold as ecstasy. Half a dozen had seizures or convulsions and ended up in the hospital. At least one person I am still in touch with has severe kidney issues as an adult as a result. In November 2019. While working in China. I asked my employer when we would be taking spring festival winter break in 2020. So I could book a flight ticket. Bizarrely. None of my coworkers wanted to give me an exact date claiming they didn't know when the term ended. I was an English teacher. At a private boarding school. In Wuhan. For some reason. They didn't want to say. It was like nobody wanted to take responsibility for me. So O decided to ignore their stupidity and just picked a date to book a ticket. As it turns out it was a date a day or so after term had ended. But. They still shut the power down in the campus because nobody told security I was still there. Managed to get hold of someone so I wasn't locked in. Following, morning get a taxi to the airport. At to Tokyo. Hang out with a friend. Wuhan gets locked down. One night when I was younger probably about 9 years old. My two brothers and my mother's friend's three kids were playing at a school playground near my mother's friend's house. It was probably 8pm. We were all about 7 to 14 years old. My brother being the oldest. A group of men in a white SUV were stalking us for a while and continued to drive back and forth from the playground we were at. Every time we tried to go back to my mother's friend's house they would turn sharp and race in front of us. The house was probably 100 yards away. Every time we tried to turn the other way and run to other houses. Same thing. 
It happened for about 10 minutes straight. Eventually we noticed one of the men jumped out of the back seat. Legit 15 seconds later my mother pulled up to the close side of the playground to pick us up to go home. We jumped in the car and raced home while most of us were crying from fear. Then we made s'mores. Definitely a memory lol. I take my dogs outside around 8pm every day. One night I was just kind of depressed and procrastinating on everything. Watching a movie. At the time I was normally outside. My next door neighbor was robbed and shot to death and the murderer tried to get in my apartment next. Thankfully my door was locked and he let it go and ran off. That was in 2019 and the trial still hasn't happened. Just a little anger at the court system thrown in there. When I was applying to grad school. I didn't get into my first choice school. This upset me very much because I kind of had my whole identity wrapped up into going to grad school. Fortunately for me. I did get into other schools years later. It came out that the professor I had wanted for my advisor had been sexually harassing a lot of grad students. I was once the last person to cross a bridge before it fell. Looked in my rear view to see what the noise was to see open air where there should been road. And some white-faced people who were just about to cross as well. Back around 2000 I worked at a sandwich shop at a mall. Was into experimenting with hard drugs at the time. Most ecstasy. A female coworker and I had conversations about doing E at some point but wasn't really sure she was serious. She was a 10 and I was a 6 at best. I finally get hooked up with Sami and we set up a night at her house. Just her and I. A couple nights before we were to roll, we closed the store together. She had these three guys she said were her brothers waiting for her at the mall entrance. She then confirmed the date. Time. Location before she left as I locked the shop down. I pretended to go back in for something, then spied on them as she approached them. She gave a suspicious no to them and high fived D the biggest guy before they walked out. This raised major red flags. Night of I tell her that I might not come because I was tired and she convinces me out of what felt like panic on her part to get me to come. She confirms everything again on the landline phone, this was before I had a cell phone and I head over. The directions put me out in the middle of nowhere to a dirt road that lead into the mountains. At this point I start freaking out and as I'm probably a mile from the house I decide to park behind some thick brush off the road enough to be hidden. I said if nothing weird happens in the next 15 minutes I'll continue to the house. Within 3 minutes headlights come up from where I came and passed by me. It was a truck with those 3 dudes from the mall riding in the back with shotguns in hand. This was the only time I ever prayed to God that they wouldn't see my car. They continue on with no issue. I'm not 100% sure what might have happened if I went to the house. I might be dead if I went according to plan. I ignored her messages for 3 days. Then when she came back to work she asked what happened. I told her I got lost and some other excuse. Never discussed anything with her after that and had no issues with those guys again. I ended up getting transferred to a different store and few weeks later. Found my blessings every day. 14 Why owe me walking home from Gravesend to East New York from a party because I lost my bus fare. It took hours. I made my way up to Brooklyn houses so almost home and it's like 2am at this point. I hear some footsteps behind me, then more footsteps, then more. Not wanting to turn around. I speed up and eventually break out into a full on run for Pennsylvania Ave. Lucked out. My dad was a cop and was already out looking for me. Picture one lone 14 Y. Oh scrawny white boy being chased by at least 20 kids in East New York. Then the beautiful sound of whoop whoop followed by lights and my step pops and his partner stepped in out like a boss. My mom threw fruit at me when I got home. Not entirely sure if this can be applied, but here we go a very long while ago when I was real young, maybe 6 to 8, my mom was taking me and my older, 8 to 10, brother to gymnastics. We were allowed to sit in the front, as long as we didn't distract our mom driving. My mom asked us if we wanted to sit in the front and we both decided not to for some reason. Which was weird because we usually fight to sit passenger. We're on our way there and right as we start heading down one of the main roads a very large truck swerves into our lane hitting the back of our car and we are thrown forward into a parked car on the side of the road. My mom's leg was broken and my brother needed stitches in his lip that he bit through. And I was fine, just some car related trauma I still have. The passenger seat though. Was decimated. This chair was in a ball. The engine on top of it with a large hole in the dash and tons of broken glass in the seat. If my brother or I sat in shotgun that day we would be 6 feet deep right now. DLDR brother and I decided not to sit in passenger seat of car. And are not dead. Similar thing in my family my mother used to be in a motorcycle club. Her boyfriend got her into it. The one night that my little brother decided to ride the boyfriend's motorcycle instead of hers my mother crashed her motorcycle in a way that should have killed almost anyone. She survived after flatlining 5 times. 
My little brother was also able to walk straight to where her body had been launched. They couldn't find her because it was night time. And she had gone over 50 yards. He went right up to her and they were able to save her. Kids have magic powers. I was going over to my home village and all the girls, my friends, wanted to come with me for the drive, but I'd shit to do so I told them I hadn't time to wait for them and they could come with me next time. About halfway there a man who recently bought land in the area who was from another county and didn't know the road, got the sun in his eyes and thought he was driving from trough road to trough road, not trough across roads and drove straight trough and I crashed into the side of him. His car was much bigger and newer than mine and my car was totaled. I was fine but had to kick my way out of the car because the quarter panel and all the metal around the wheel arch etc was up outside my door. My engine was under me, and the various fluids of the car were pissing around the road, if the girls had been with me most of them would have been killed, because a few of them would never put a seatbelt on for you, and at least one of them would probably have been smoking. I met a chick. Slept with her. Took her on a date where we got kicked out of the bar for her shenanigans. Held her hair back for her that night. She figured out where I worked. Stalked me all day. I went out with my coworker for his birthday, and she found us at the bar that no one else knew I was going to. Told me she loved me in the middle of the street as I nearly ran her over trying to get away. Saw her on the local news two days later having been arrested for being involved in or complacent with her ex-boyfriend, raping and killing her two-year-old daughter a year-ish before I met her. She's in prison now. All occurred over a five-day period. Ada. She gave me a blowjob during a traffic stop before we went to the bar we would get kicked out of. Fucking crazy. Should've smelt it by then, but I was thinking with my little head.